For our last double exposure exercise, we're going to take this woman and put a road in her head. She's thinking about traveling. She wants to travel. Um, once again, kind of like the first one, he, she's kind of has this side profile gazing and with kind of a sadness. So let's and this is really good because we have this black hair. It's almost the perfect backdrop to let kind of that other second photo shine right there in this nice clean area of her hair. So let's bring in a photo of a road I found on Pexels. We'll this one right here, we're just gonna bring this one right in. Click enter and I'm gonna do a quick blending mode. Let's do screen. So right now we don't wanna have all of that background in there. We just want it to kind of be cropped around the shape of her body and her face. So let's go ahead and toggle this off for now and let's prepare our image. Let's isolate and select this. So let's go up to select. We could just do select subject. I think it'll probably do a pretty good job. But let's do select and mask and do select subject. And let's see if refine hair will help us give us a better selection. Click on OK. And now we're just going to apply a layering mask to crop her out. And what we want to do, so if we toggle our image back on, it's still not really, it's still showing these this photo through. That's because we're not putting it on a white background. So let's create our white background. It's the same process as we did with the first one. Just a white background, bring it all the way to the bottom. And now we can have our screen blending mode on the road and we could just find a really good position for it. Maybe right about here. We don't want to put it here because I think I might keep her face a little bit more clear. So let's put the road kind of a little bit more on the left. And we could put a layering mask on the road and paint on with black to remove some of it from her face. Make the brush a little bit smaller and let's toggle on white and get back some of our selection. So toggling between black and white to see what works better. That looks like that's kind of when I did the refine hair I think it kind of took a chunk of her forehead out but that's okay because I can click back on that layering mask and go back to selected mask and figure out that. So let's see if we can't add to the selection, that get that forehead back. I don't know why it did that. We click OK, and there we go. We got our forehead back a little bit. So let's go out. I think that was nice and quick. We can change the background if we want. So let's change it to blue. And we have her cropped right here with the layering mask, but we also need to make sure we have this top image. If we want to change the background, if we don't want to have it just be plain white, we're going to have to do this. So now we're going to have to clip it to this outline of the woman. So let's clip this top layer. Let's clip it to the shape of the woman. So we're going to hold down Option. Remember this? Click once. Now we're going to clip it. Now this gives us the ability to really bring another background in. So just kind of took a sample of this part of the road just to kind of have thematic colors. So kind of take borrowing a color from within the photo to kind of marry the background and the photo. So let's say I don't want the top of her head showing. I kind of want the mountains to kind of crop her head. You can do that by getting the, selecting the layering mask of her right here, selecting the layer mask and painting on with black to remove. So we're going to remove a little bit of her. You can also use the magnetic lasso tool to make a more accurate selection. And then paint away with black. Just paint it away. But I kind of like how it looked before with a little bit of the outline but just wanted to kind of demonstrate that for you. You could put all sorts of things in the background now that she, this image of the road is now clipped down to the layer below. So now you have free reign to put any kind of shapes 
behind here. So if I want to do the ellipse tool, kind of frame her head a little bit and make that a different color, maybe I can sample a color within here like the mountains. A lot of times it's nice to frame within a shape. So I'm going to create almost like a glow effect around her head. I just created a simple ellipse tool and we're just going to go up and we're just going to blur it. And it says the shape layer must be rasterized to blur it and that's okay. Just convert to convert to smart object. It'll be fine. It'll do it after it does the effect. And let's make this a big glow. So make it really big, gossy and blur. Click OK kind of added this little bit of a glow effect to her. So there you have it, the double exposure effect. It's just a combination of a, a select few blending modes using layering masks to really unite and fuse two different photos together to tell some kind of narrative or interesting story about what what is the relation between the two images to make really dynamic, compelling double exposure projects. It seems a little bit complicated at first. We did the same project pretty much twice, but with some different images. So you got to kind of see how we clipped layers and how we did the selected mask tool and some other things. So I'm really glad we got to do this project because I think we got to practice a lot of different things that we'll be using later on, um, especially layering masks, which you know we're gonna be using a lot. Layering masks are so, as you've seen, are very valuable in isolating and, and cutting out um, objects. So of course, there's gonna be a student project. I'd love to see what you come up with. What kind of double exposure or two different images can you put together and make a really interesting effect? I can't wait to see your work and I'll see you in the next couple lessons.